The early 2000s were a pretty big time for MOA in general, which also included a somewhat weird phenomenon we would call children's MOA. I touched on this in my video on Pita Ten, an adorable series helmed by Kokodombo that took the supernatural harem setup and put it in elementary school, and how Pita Ten was marketed to girls in North America but actually came from a shonen magazine. A similar thing happened with Fall 2001's A Little Snow Fairy Sugar. Sugar is not a harem series, but rather a fantasy iyashike. The show tells the story of a kid named Saga who's all about schedules and rules and keeping her life perfectly under control after moving in with her grandma in the wake of her mother's death. Saga's day full of running errands and helping out the townspeople gets derailed when she sees a starving fairy that no one else can see. Saga takes pity on the fairy, feeds her, and takes her home. And unfortunately for her, the fairy, called Sugar, demands to stay and look for some vague thing called a twinkle and persistently turns Saga's life sideways with her snow magic and bratty antics. The series is a two-core anime original directed by Kimura Shinichiro, and if you notice any similarity with Pita Ten, it's probably because the character designs were also done by Kogadombo. She was pretty busy around that time. The anime was produced by JC Staff with input from Pioneer and Kadokawa, the latter of which tied it in with a manga adaptation put out around the same time a la Wedding Peach. A Little Snow Fairy Sugar is… cute. That's the biggest thing you can say about it. It exists to make you want to hug the characters and laugh at whatever silly, largely inoffensive stunt they're gonna pull next. When problems arise, which is often, they're arguments born of misunderstandings or where no one's really right or wrong. The show presents that Saga is just as selfish for not wanting her perfect planned out life disrupted as Sugar is for willfully messing it up, which is a bit of a hard pill, but may be needed. Any real peril gets softened for maximum kid friendliness. A bird attacking Sugar always seems to miss even when she should obviously be in reach, and when she falls in with a bad crowd who invite her to join their delinquent gang, that just means she dresses like a disaster, pranks the villagers, and steals corn on the cob. It's fluff for kids, but it knows it is, and it doesn't see anything wrong with that. The most memorable part of A Little Snow Fairy Sugar, aside from its aim to be as adorable as possible at all times, is the weird cultural mashup it has going on. The show takes place in a fantasy version of Rothenburg, Germany, but the on-screen text will only be in German 9 times out of 10, and English every so often. The OP is a cover of a British bubblegum pop song from the 70s, with Japanese trans lyrics that aren't exactly faithful to the original, but are sweet nonetheless. There's also the bit where the schools use briefcases and have strict rules against students wearing jewelry, which reads a lot more Japanese than German. Despite these small blips, for the most part, the series seems to depict the foreign setting faithfully and even had input from Rothenberg's tourism board. For downsides, well, the show is cute and that's it. It doesn't have a lot of substance and you'll probably have the entire show's plot figured out within the first two or three episodes. Hint, is the friends they made along the way. But that's intentional. Like I said, simple and childish is the show's identity and it completely owns that. The director hasn't really made much that was actually good. In fact, aside from Popotan, which you probably only know from the Carmel Donson meme, his work has been largely forgotten. But focusing on something that doesn't need to be anything but simple makes Sugar one of his better works by far. What's unintentionally annoying is an insipid love triangle between the adult side characters. The Elder's entire character is that he's supposed to be this wise and powerful fairy and everyone looks up to him, but he's obsessed with confessing his love to a woman less than half his age, who is in turn mooning over a guy who only cares about clouds. It eats up entirely too much of the show with boring, repetitive jokes, and the Elder in particular comes off super creepy. Come on, buddy. As a Pioneer co-production, A Little Snow Fairy Sugar was predictably licensed by Genion when they were still in operation. Sentai Licensed rescued it in 2009 and has re-released it in a box set as part of their Sentai Selects line of classic anime. The set includes the 24-episode series and the subsequent two-part OVA, and unlike many of these re-release box sets, it includes a number of special features like the Japanese trailer and a showcase of the real locations from the show. Sugar also ran on Anime Network, and both the show and the OVA are on High Dive, though only streaming the dub. The physical release has a sub as well. Honestly, I prefer the sub anyway on this one. This series isn't much beyond cute, but that's what's great about it. It might be exactly what you need if you're looking for something fluffy to wind down with, or just something you can show to your younger relatives. Not everything has to be a masterpiece, and sometimes that's okay. It might make you really hungry for waffles, though. Let me know in the comments whether you've seen A Little Snow Fairy Sugar and what you thought of it. This is Secret Identity Studio, and if an 11 year old is lecturing you about your business practices, that's really sad. 
If you didn't know that this show predates the Do You Like Waffles meme by seven years, you might assume a relation.